Hey, my old friend tubers. This is the pestle man coming at you. Been a while for me. I've uh, had a few issues with uh, going round and round with uh, Mama YouTube. She uh, cut me off. Just I tried to open up a Gmail account and it wouldn't let, and G and Google wouldn't let me. And then. Uh, basically what happened is at the end you know how they give you a number that you're supposed to fill in to seal the deal you know your secret confidential number they email you well the stupid thing just sit there and told me the number was no good and then to add insult to injury proceeded to take all my YouTube uh, notifications and <laughs> send them to the new email that <laughs> they never activated Oh man, trying to, you know what it's like trying to talk to anybody at YouTube, you know, it's just nobody home. Anyway, I'm back, I've got it all straightened out, and I just wanted to tell anybody, everybody that if you are having like issues like that with YouTube, oh man, I got a phone number for a guy at Apple that can absolutely straighten all that stuff up. He's not supposed to, but he's such a nice guy. He will anyway. You know, Apple just likes you doing their stuff, and they compete with Google and YouTube, you know, so they're not supposed to fix their errors, but this guy's so cool, he will. Anyway, message me if that's your deal. So what I got going here today is I'm showing off some of the very earliest tools that humankind ever made that, you know, once they were really for sure human, like, we'll take this guy here first. Now this is my old Homo erectus hand axe, sometime between 450,000 and probably 1.2 million years old. I've had this old guy here for 40 years. You know, look at how well the it's got a profile for, you know, chopping and cutting. Got a tip down here like uh, like a knife like a knife and you know, I don't really know how they handled them because boy that end, they must have had r tough hands cuz that end is actually pretty sharp too. Anyway, they and the direct percussion and this one here is made out of um, uh, quartzite, a golden quartzite. Now, I bring all this up here because I just bagged a whole bunch more of them. I got myself like almost a dozen more of them and I got them dirt cheap. And they're like of obvious antiquity. I mean, like, for instance, if you look at these two here, they are the same stone. This, the difference being, this came out of a rock sheltery place, so it was like totally sheltered from the elements, other than a little bit of water. Where the, where this old guy has been out there getting sandblasted by the desert sands out there in northern Africa, actually northwest Africa, where human beings were really got their start. But it's just the you know. I mean, those two guys are just spitting images of each other. Just unbelievable. They, you know, they side to side. They, they almost look like the same guy made them. But uh, so that, and, and now here's another one. This one is kind of a rare for a, a Homo erectus hand axe. It's made out of jasper. Look at the jasper, just as. It looks like it's polished all over it. Very cool. Here's another uh, much smaller one. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was like a woman's tool or just a you know handy little tool. You, but you know you can see the bottom ground stain on it, and and the super glazed desert polish up there on the top. Now, note how similar these two guys are here. Now this one. Here is out of the Mojave Desert, and it's uh, associated with guys they call Calico Man, which got scandalized so bad in the late 60s by uh, old man Leakey divorcing his wife, Ruth, who, no wait, I forget her name, and uh, 
she uh, took him to court in a divorce court and alleged that he was out there blowing all the National Geographic dig funds there. And uh, he, you know, on basically, you know, Bacchanalian orgies with all the hippie chicks that were his uh, dig assistants and buying California wine. Oh, man, that just was scandalized that site so bad that everybody involved with it lost all their credentials and all the grad students basically had to change their uh, majors and you know go for being some other kind of guy here's another old rock out of there it's a, a chopper big old chopper got a you know big old kind of you know, softer in your palm, you know, palm friendly end on it, but you know, big old chopping blade on this side here. A, a lot like a uh, Kerrville knife. A and for instance, on the subject of Kerrville knives, look how similar this, these guys here were to Kerrville knives. These things here were for chopping up uh, carcasses of big beasts out there on the African savannas and whatnot. Now, y you know that uh, Leakey dated these guys here by his best estimate between 50,000 and 250,000 years old. And Leakey was no chump. He was no fool. I mean, he's responsible for the uh, Afri discovery of Africanus afarensis, who, uh, you know, and, and, and predicting the Australopithecine apes like Lucy. And, uh, you know, he pushed back the date of human origins by several million years. So, I mean, this guy is no chump. He, you know, he's been out there doing early man archaeology for, you know, 40, 50 years when he came to America because Dr. Ruth Simpson asked him here. And then he looked at Calico Man and all of that huge site up there in the Yermo Fan and out there around the entire shores of Pleistocene Lake Mannix, which doesn't even exist anymore. You know, now it's just got a little dry stream of the Mojave River running through it but uh, through the center of it, and it's only about 100 feet wide at the widest. And uh, barely, you know, most of the time it runs submerged under the ground anymore. But that area was a verdant conifer forest back when these things were in play, which according to my uh, best understanding, these guys here, I don't care what any archaeologist in America says, it's a shame that they have basically blackballed this site right here. And, you know, what happened after the big scandal with Leakey is the American archaeology, you know, well, really, they got their balls broke by the Clovis Firsters because the Clovis First theory had just come into play and, oh, everybody had, you know, formed their careers around papers and books and research they had all done backing up and proving Clovis First, which has now been absolutely discredited, you know, 40, 50 years later, but they're not going back and, and undoing all the damage that, Clo that Clovis First theory did to some of the other early sites that they're still ignoring, like uh, Calico Man. I mean, these things here date back to at least Calico Man had disappeared by 20,000 years ago. And the way that is absolutely proved is, I'll show you a few more tools, Calico Man tools while I'm talking here. And the way that is just absolutely indirectly proved is there, Lake Mannix, Pleistocene Lake Mannix was a fairly shallow lake. And there were hills and little mountains out there that were islands back in the day. And so there's desert pavement out there now where all the top 14 to 36 feet of the soil that used to be out there when it was a conifer forest has all dried up and blown away. So all the rocks in that first 14 to 36 feet are now in one layer on top of the ground out there. And you can't tell who was who or what was what. It's all there in a pile, which is one reason archaeologists uh, just hate it because there's not really good layers to date it out there. But at any rate, 
uh, there's on uh, above, you know. So and the water lines from Lake Mannix were pretty stable. And what they did is, you've ever seen shorelines where the water laps around the shore? It leaves a really distinct eroded shoreline. So you can see where the old lines are in these hills around there. And so you climb up the hills, and at a certain point, you see that shoreline you're crossing, and then you start finding these things. Or the workshops that they used making these things. And below that shoreline... There's nothing like this. I mean, absolutely nothing. A few of them that you can tell around the very, you know, a few feet down there that have kind of, you know, fallen down with time, you know, just kind of slumped down the hill as the whole hillside kind of came down a little. But then the key to the date on it is, is they know when Pleistocene Mannix drained. It drained in a huge catastrophic event like um and and ran a river out of it the size of the Colorado River and it ate out a deep canyon out there um that is is huge deep 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 monster canyon you know uh, hundreds of feet deep and it all it all drained in a, like a 3 week period of time they figured Afton Canyon is the name of it beautiful place to find giant killer agates too but I mean <laughs> look at these I mean it's the same kind of tech that uh, Calico Man and Homo Erectus were using now I'm not saying that these guys were of the age of, of Homo Erectus or if they were primitive like that I don't know what happened I honestly think something like a Lord of the Flies event happened like um Basically, maybe, a, you know, the first guys to get here, you know, or, or, you know, or whatever, these early, early settlers in the Americas, like probably 45, 50,000 years ago at least, in my opinion anyway, and, and in the opinion of a whole bunch of stuff that's being found like at the Topper site, they're finding stuff that they're dating at 40, 50,000 years ago, and of course, scientists are arguing about it, but, um, uh...